Back on Sports Bit, Betty and Inside today. Follow us on Twitter at Paulie Howard at Teddy underscore covers. As always, live on sportsbookreview.com. Sunday, 10 a.m. Pacific, NBC. Yes, Steelers and the Chiefs. Chiefs one and a half, 44 the total. Weather, ice storm potential. Careful out there if you're going to the game. Freezing rain expected to begin in the KC metro area as soon as uh, tonight and continue through at least Saturday. By Sunday morning, ice accumulations are expected to be enough to make any untreated roads or streets hazardous. For now, the Sunday forecast is a threat of freezing rain early in the day and uh, changing over to rain later. It's a rematch, 43-14. to Steelers punked them on Sunday night. And counting the playoffs, Andy Reid, 20-2 and off the bye. It's interesting to note that this line has moved up. Remember, I saw two and a half right away. Pittsburgh was favored. And then you saw 47 the total. And then, you know, the report came out that Big Ben had the Himalayan walking boot he got from Elaine Bennis. Uh, walking around afterwards, and then it's like, oh, I'm going to be fine, I'm going to be okay. But the markets reacted to that report that Ben had the walking boot on. Yeah, but since that time, I mean, it was an initial, it was the money was pouring in on Casey at the Open. And now we've seen a little bit of buyback on the Pittsburgh side of the equation. So with the line down one, one and a half, uh, one and a half is a really number. You can find plenty of ones uh, out there. And this was more like two, two and a half uh, a, a couple of days ago. So we have seen a little bit of buyback on the Pittsburgh side of the equations, you're going to hear this over and over again. Now, Andy Reid, 20-2 and two off a bye. That's straight-up record. Now, let's look at this and put it under the microscope a little bit, okay? He's acquired a bye in the playoffs. This is just the fourth time in his 18-year coaching career uh, that he's, his team has gotten a first-round bye in the playoffs. He did it in 2002 with the Eagles, uh, 2003 with the Eagles, 2004 uh, with the Eagles. They won and covered uh, all of those games, although one of them came in overtime against Green Bay. But what stood out about their three opponents, uh, all right, they beat Atlanta, Green Bay, Minnesota. That was the Michael Vick-led Falcons, the Brett Favre-led Packers, the Dante Culpepper-led Vikings. Three teams with pretty good quarterbacks and pretty good offenses. All of them were top 10 offenses in that particular season. And Andy Reid's team's held them to a combined total of 37 points in those three playoff victories. But again, we're talking about stuff that's more than a decade ago. While Reed does have a great track record off a of bye, I wouldn't be betting on or against Kansas City simply because of that track record. Much of it is from way back in the day. Yep, good point there. They're plus 16 in turnovers in KC football outsider ratings. Look at this graphic, overall sixth. Offense 13th, defense 14th, special teams second. It shows the impact of special teams, often neglected by betters. It's a fireable offense if you kick to Tyree Kill. Hill and Kelsey have accounted for 45% of their yards in the last six games. And as we've talked about many times on Sportsbit, it was the turnover differential with the Chiefs as well because it seemed they were outgained every game. Well, yeah, I mean, for the season. Kansas City trailed their opponents by 37 first downs and 408 total yards. So how do you overcome that? As you mentioned, the plus 16 turnover margin and the impact of those dynamite special teams. Look at this. Kansas City averaged 43 yards net per punt. Their opponents averaged 36 yards net per punt. So every time the Chiefs punted and their opponents punted, Kansas City gained 7 yards they picked up about 33 yards per game just in that category. Tyreek Hill, what do you have, three return touchdowns? Casey didn't allow any, so there it is, another 21 points over 16 games. That's more than a point per game average. And I like what Andy Reid did here. Andy Reid gave the Chiefs a complete week off, a whole week, to get physically fresh and maybe to take the pressure off. Here's what he said about the bye week, quote, Every team is crazy different. Every situation in the league is different. Every year is different. I know the buy normally doesn't hurt you if you handle it the right way. I have enough trust. Our team will handle it the right way. There's a lot of trust that goes into this thing. Yes, and the Steelers have a far better defense. You know, in that first matchup, 43-14, to 14, Bell ran wild on the Chiefs. But this is a hot team. That's won eight in a row. Five and four before Harrison became the starter. Eight no sense. Now Dupree starting for the fifth straight game also. Uh, he had the big hit on Moore starting at linebacker. And 
Le'Veon Bell might be the most important non-quarterback player in the NFL right now. Built for the playoffs, comes in fresh. Teddy, I've never seen a running back before this patient who actually stops. So he looks to pick the holes in how he chewed up Miami last week. And it was 36 to nothing going into the fourth quarter on that Sunday night game. As I mentioned, 144 yards rushing on only 18 carries. And he had five grabs for 34 yards also in the win uh, earlier against KC. Sure, and when you talk about Bell's success and how Bell is built for January football, you look at Kansas City, and again, statistically, what's their biggest weakness? The run defense, number 26 on Football Outsiders adjusted ratings. They allowed close to 2,000 rushing yards at 4.4 per carry. The other question with KC, and you said it's a fireable offense to kick the ball to Tyreek Hill. If teams simply kick the ball away from Hill, does that end up negating a big chunk of their special teams edge? That's an interesting question, and I wonder what Pittsburgh's going to do in that regard in this game. Yeah. How about Alex Smith? Do you think he can win a big game like this? Yes. Yes, I do. I don't, I don't look him. at Alex Smith and saying, Ben Roethlisberger is so much better than you are. Alex Smith has been a very effective quarterback in that system that he's run, just like he was at Utah under Urban Meyer, a guy who's never been loved, who's never gotten any respect, and yet a guy who was the number one overall draft choice, a guy who's had a rock-solid NFL career, a guy who's been able to win in places where others have struggled. Alex Smith's not Big Ben, but I don't look at Alex Smith and saying, this guy can't win this game, he's not a good enough quarterback. He is, Polly. He really is. Hey guys, for the full video, go to sbrpicks.com. Go to sbrodds.com. Browse, compare, and shop live odds available at top online sportsbooks.